In October, Russian invaders managed to seize more than 470 square kilometers of Ukrainian territory. This is the occupier's largest territorial gain since March 2022. This was reported by Welt Media Outlet. According to media reports, Russia made rapid advances in Ukraine last week. In total, from 20 to October 27, the Russian army managed to occupy 196 square kilometers. At the same time, the AFP news agency, citing data from the U.S. Institute for the Study of War, reported that the Russian army had advanced on 478 square kilometers of Ukrainian territory since the beginning of October. By October 27, Russian troops had taken control of more territory than in August and September, when the territorial gains were 477 and 459 square kilometers respectively. In two months, there have already been significant shifts on the front line, especially in eastern Ukraine, around the strategically important city of Pokrovsk, the article says. The journalists note that two-thirds of Russia's territorial gains in October were in Donetsk region, where Russians are approaching Pokrovsk from the south and east. The Ukrainian army has found itself in a difficult position on the eastern front, given the numerically superior and better armed Russian soldiers. The last time Russian troops managed such an advance in March 2022, when they tried to reach Kiev. In total, in 2023, they occupied 584 square meters of Ukraine's territory, and the area seized since January 1, 2024 is 2,660 square kilometers, Welt writes. Together with Crimea, annexed in 2014, and the territories in Donbass that had already been controlled by separatists before the Russian offensive, Moscow currently controls about 18.2% of Ukrainian territory. As reported Ukrainian army gained up to 1,300 square kilometers as a result of the offensive in Kursk region. Former Russian President Dmitry Medvedev has quipped that he anticipates a fireworks display at German industrial giant Rheinmetall's new weapons manufacturing facility in Ukraine. The company announced on Saturday that one of its production plants in the country is already operational. Germany's largest arms maker finalized plans to establish a joint venture with the state-owned Ukro Baronprom Defense Group earlier this year to manufacture artillery ammunition, armored vehicles and air defense systems. As part of the partnership agreement, Rheinmetall, which produces a vast array of weapons including Leopard tanks, stated that it would build four factories on Ukrainian soil. Moscow responded to the announcement with a warning that such facilities are considered legitimate targets for Russian strikes. Rheinmetall's director, Amen Paperga, confirmed that things are progressing in Ukraine and the first plant is already ready. We have many good plans. The first plant is already operational, he said, during an interview with Ukrainian news channel TSN. The Ukrainian defense industry is our partner. Currently, we have a production facility and a maintenance facility. By the end of the year, we will have the first state-of-the-art Lynx infantry fighting vehicle in Ukraine. At the moment, we are serving infantry fighting vehicles as well as main battle tanks, he added, noting that the joint venture has proven productive. Medvedev, who currently serves as the deputy head of Russia's Security Council, commented on the development, implying that the newly built plant will be targeted by the Russian military. The German company Rheinmetall has launched the first of four military factories in Ukraine. As previously promised, we eagerly await a celebratory Russian fireworks display right at the production site. He said in a post on X and his Telegram channel accompanying the message with a short video of an explosion. Rheinmetall had previously stated that the Ukrainian conflict has significantly improved business performance and nearly doubled the company's operating profit in the first half of 2024. 
The company expects to receive orders exceeding $64.8 billion by the end of this year. Moscow has repeatedly denounced Western involvement in the conflict, arguing that efforts to support Kiev only benefit the military-industrial complex at the expense of EU and US taxpayers. Russia maintains that no amount of military aid to Ukraine will change the outcome of the conflict and will only prolong the fighting. Demoralized Russian soldiers refuse to go into battle and complain about the lack of reliable shelters from Ukrainian drones. Russian occupiers in the face of losses are throwing the wounded into meat assaults. The enemy has already used such tactics near Lehman, the main intelligence directorate of the Ukrainian Defense Ministry reports. The Russian occupation army is trying to increase the pace of its offensive in the area of the city of Lehman in the Donetsk region. To do this, the enemy has transferred additional assault units of the 283rd and 488th motorized rifle regiments of the Russian armed forces to the specified zone, the GUR noted. However, the Ukrainian security and defense forces have inflicted serious losses on the Russians. Some assault groups have lost their combat capability. The demoralized Russian invaders refuse to go into battle and complain about the lack of reliable shelters from Ukrainian drones. To continue offensive actions, the command of the occupation forces uses methods of pressure, coercion and intimidation. Lightly wounded invaders are thrown into the meat assaults. The intelligence added, Russia benefits from a significantly larger population than Ukraine. Some of those in the assaults are former prisoners, but Russia is also able to recruit through making one-off payments, sometimes thousands of dollars. And there have been complaints from the Russian side about crippled regiments in which wounded soldiers are forced back into fighting. All of this, Western officials say, means Moscow can keep throwing soldiers, even poorly trained, straight on the front lines at the same rate they are being killed or wounded. Ukraine could not match the Russian tactics even if it had the numbers, partly due to a different attitude towards casualties. Vladimir Putin is counting on wearing down Ukraine on the battlefield and outlasting the West's resolve to provide support, as well as launching guided aerial bombs against frontline positions and civilians in Kharkiv. Moscow has also targeted energy infrastructure across the country, leading to increasingly frequent power blackouts and concerns over what winter might bring. November's US election adds another layer of uncertainty along with a question mark as to whether the European Union could realistically pick up any slack.